China has long been a surveillance state. Now Big Brother meets Big Data. In trials across the country, cameras and spyware are watching, mapping your digital footprint to every step you take. What you do, say and even think is being monitored and marked against you. The party calls it social credit, a personal scorecard for 1.4 billion citizens. Rewards for good behaviour and punishments for bad. It's not fully operational yet, but this report will show you a vision of China's dystopian future, the world's first digital dictatorship. China's cities are already flush with cameras, around 200 million of them. What's changing is they're getting smarter. China is positioning itself to lead the world in artificial intelligence. Surveillance technology is a key proving ground. Facial recognition, body scanning and geo-tracking matched with your personal data and online behaviour will power the social credit system, leaving no dark corner to hide in. At the World Intelligence Congress in Tianjin, Big Brother's new toys are on show. Several of the exhibitors here, including tech giant Alibaba, are now working with the state to write the algorithms that will calculate your social credit score. They've already got the know-how and the user data from their financial credit system, Alipay. Manager of Alipay Tianjin, is Chong Jia. Sounds dramatic, but it's the party line. Pilot programs for a national social credit system are already underway. By 2020, the official outline boasts it will allow the trustworthy to roam freely under heaven, while making it hard for the discredited to take a single step. Chinese very much the modern Chinese woman. She's a marketing professional, diligent and prosperous, and sees clear skies in her digital future. Now,其实政府已经掌握了我们很多资料，然后政府方也掌握了一些我们个人信用，就比如说是否遵纪守法啊，以及我们的教育程度。那我觉得，如果把所有的大数据，那对我们来讲，其实是更高效的。a model citizen, Dan Dan will rate highly on social credit. 
that her every action will be tracked and judged is fine by her. Dandan's criminal, academic and medical records will feed into her score, as well as state security assessments. Her shopping habits will be another measure. Her score could even change in real time, depending on what she puts in her trolley. Buy a lot of alcohol suggests dependence. Lose a couple of points. Buy a pack of nappies, gain a few, suggests responsibility. Late on mortgage payments or your tax return, lose a lot more. Not that Dandan Dan would risk that. She keeps a close eye on her financial rating via a mobile payment app. So this is Sesame Credit, right? Yeah. So what's the score that you have? See so if it's seven, 773. 773. Correct. So what's the maximum you can get? I think it's 800. So you got a pretty good score. Oh, wow. I'm, I think I'm doing well. Not the best, but uh, yeah, but somewhere on top. <laughs> 773. So what kind of access or what kind of privileges does that give you? This is like for rent cars. I yep. don't have to pay deposit. So you don't have to pay a deposit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and this is also for a hotel and also no deposit for renting a, a house. China's middle class is on the rise. Like Dan Dan, they're mostly young, urban, and used to living much of their lives online and on devices. So I think this is the same thing that I have done in the past. I think it's the same thing that I have done in the past. I think it's the same thing that I have done 所以我觉得，对，这其实是在我们已有的基础上去去建立这么一个体体系。Who you date and ultimately partner with will also affect your social credit. Dan Dan married for love, but she also chose the right husband. Zhang Xiaojing's score is likely to be even higher than hers. Xiao Jing is a civil servant with the Justice Department, a loyal cadre of the party. So 他们被蒙住了眼睛,捂住了耳朵,实际上又聋又瞎的,他们其实很多信息都不知道,就呈现在一种虚幻的感觉里面。I've come to Chongqing City, 
a high-tech metropolis in central China, where the Jialing River meets the Yangtze. I'm here to meet one of the 10 million people who've seen the dark side of the social credit system. Investigative journalist Leo Hu. With a street smart, hands-on approach, Hu has exposed high-level corruption and solved murder cases abandoned by the police. In many countries, he'd be celebrated, not in China. In 2015, who lost a defamation case after he accused an official of extortion? He was made to publish an apology and pay a fine. But when the court demanded an additional fee, who refused? Then in 2017, he found himself suddenly locked out of society. Under a pilot social credit scheme, he'd been blacklisted as dishonest. 我有一些律师朋友，也有一些法官朋友，他们都告诉我们，吃信是因为欠钱，我不欠钱，我是不能够拉我这个名单的。Who maintains he has fully met the terms of his 2015 case? He believes his blacklisting is political, but he has no way of challenging it. 那个，我有两个看，两方面看法。第一个是。his poor social credit rating has shut down his travel options and confined him to effective house arrest in Chongqing. APP来订票。呃，现在是我们从重庆到西安，我们来订一张票，订一张现过几天的票。And social media accounts have also been closed before his arrest. He had nearly two million followers. It's where he published much of his journalism. Who scrapes by writing for an online publication? His investigative reports are on hold. It's not his first run-in with censorship. In August 2013, he was detained without trial after exposing a senior party member's links with illegal prostitution. This is a recreation based on whose accounts. Over the course of a year, he was interrogated more than 70 times. Who refused to confess and was eventually released? Now he's trapped again. The four walls of a cell replaced by social credits dragnet. Ting 
I'm going to a place where the principles of social credit have been taken to brutal extremes. The party doesn't want the world to know about it. Reporting on the situation is risky. To get there, we must fly 4,000 kilometers from Beijing to the western edge of China. Xinjiang, the nation's largest province, and according to some, the world's largest open prison. Xinjiang is the homeland of the Uyghurs, a Turkic people of Islamic faith. China's rulers have struggled to control the region and its people for two millennia. Surveillance technology is the new weapon in their campaign. Tahi Hamad is a Uyghur filmmaker and poet from the Xinjiang city of Kashgar. He can talk about the situation there because he managed to escape with his family to the US, where they've applied for political asylum. He made the decision to flee last year. Tahir and his wife were being scanned by facial recognition software. Their faces mapped from all angles to enhance accuracy. They were even forced to produce a range of facial expressions. Meaning, the book control system is uh, Inside Kashgar, it's almost impossible to report independently. Government officials do their best to conceal any sign of the oppression Tahir describes. Look closer and the cracks appear. The party-approved vision of this city is a facade. Kashgar's historic old town has been demolished and just one section rebuilt as a sort of Uyghur theme park for Chinese tourists. You can buy souvenirs, try the local cuisine and even see a show. But there's tension in the air. The locals can't speak with us. Armed guards and cameras keep a watchful eye, and Chinese flags claim the rooftops, even the dome of the mosque. 
So it's quite difficult to film here. We've got about six miners with us the whole time. Uh, they're telling us what we can film, what we can't do. Sometimes they delete our material. On top of that, we've got about another eight to ten security guards that further restrict our movements. What I can tell you from the car is that though they've set up a, a kind of grid-like management system and every 100 metres or so you see a police station and they're aided with enormous amounts of CCTV cameras, uh, with facial recognition, um, to really have a total control here. What is clear is that there is quite a brutal, repressive crackdown going on here and technology is at the centre of it. Xinjiang's take on social credit is simple and ruthless. Citizens here are not given a score. Instead, they're divided into just three categories. Trustworthy, average, untrustworthy. If you're Han Chinese, you're deemed trustworthy and granted freedom of movement. But if you're Uyghur, you're average, with restrictions imposed on travel and religious practices. If you're a Uyghur male who breaks those restrictions, you're marked as untrustworthy and detained in what the party calls education and training centres. Tahir Hamut has another name for them. Ola künde on net saatle siyasi ögünüş kıldı. Anan dinkin yedigan tamakı, işidigan suyu, turmuşu intayını kıyın. Anan dinkin emde bu cıvılış lagırlarda emde nurgun adam kisel oludu. Anan dinkin hatta ölüp gitip atkan adamdan ki uşullarını şu çağdın tatip biz anlaşkı başlıgan. In August this year, the UN announced it had seen credible reports that over a million Uyghurs are currently held without charge in camps in Xinjiang, purely because of their ethnicity. The Chinese government rejects the claim, insisting it only detains convicted terrorists. Tahir's personal experience tells a different story. When Xinjiang authorities discovered he'd fled to America, his brother and two brothers-in-law disappeared. Ulan <laughs> Back in Chongqing, journalist Leo Hu worries for his family too. His blacklisting on social credit has cast a shadow on those closest to him. Xia Xian Hu is an old journalist colleague. Like Tahir, who is risking the welfare of his friends and family to alert the world to China's experiment in high-tech social engineering. He says people don't fully comprehend what's to come. A digital totalitarian state where algorithms decide your fate and nothing can be questioned. Xianzhi政府权力的时候就不学了 
觉得中国是人口最多的一个国家，那它可能跟西方国家不太一样。如果在西方去，呃，做一个呃申请，嗯、呃，我觉得肯定是宝宝慢慢的呃健康成长，然后开开心心的，呃，肯定他有自己喜欢做的事情，然后有有一个比较良好的教育，然后呃可以非常开心的生活，我觉得这个就是最重要的了。Fan Dan Dan and husband Xiao Jing's high social credit will give their son Ri Bao a running start. The provisions and protections of the party will be bestowed upon him, so long as mum and dad keep their credit up. Because I think he is in this place. 呃，即使好多东西不是尽善尽美的，不是现在就已经很完美了，但他愿意去尝试这样的一个创新的一个呃手法，然后在使用的过程中慢慢去把它变得更好、更合适、更适合这个社会。那我觉得这个我是非常看好的，我也希望这个呃信用体系可以真正的给大家带来更多的收益。